All right, Shane, before we get this started, let's just make sure that we're in agreement here. I do this video for you. You send over every single subscriber that you ever had. And they better click sub. I'm counting. I'm taking count. If they don't, God, I send over uncles. I send over cousins. And we handle business. All right, I fear for my life right now. Go subscribe to Anthony and everybody else in this video. Let's get into it. Welcome back folks, my name's Shane. In today's video, I put together a collaboration video with some of my favorite creators here in the tech and camera space on YouTube. And we're gonna give you a rundown of the type of cameras, lenses, lighting, and so forth that we use here in our studio, or if we shoot outdoors, what we use in those scenarios. I wanted to extend a massive thank you to everybody who's involved in this video. I've known some of these creators for a long time and some I just reached out to and said, hey, do you wanna be a part of this video? And they all said yes, so thank you so much. Check them out, links will be below. Let's get into it. Hi guys, my name is Matti Sulanto. I'm from Finland and I have a channel called Sulanto Blog. It's about cameras and photography. My main camera is the Sony A7 IV. Because it has solid, reliable autofocus, it's full frame, so I can film either full frame or APS-C, and it has the best lens support. Every manufacturer supports Sony E-mount. I have three prime lenses for the Sony a7 IV. I have the 24mm f2.8 and 40mm and 50mm f2.5 Sony G lenses. Whenever I'm outside, I'm using Nisi variable ND filters because in my opinion, they're the best. My second video camera is the Sony ZV-1 because it's such a tiny package. It has excellent image quality for both photos and video, and it has the same excellent autofocus as on my Sony a7 IV. I also have the GoPro Hero 8 for POV and vlog type of footage. My most used audio device is the Rode Wireless Go, the first generation, which I bought over three years ago, and it's been super reliable and easy to use. Currently, my main video light is the Pixel P80 LED panel, but I'm about to move soon, and when I get my new studio space, I may have to rethink my lighting setup. Big thanks to Shane for having me, and all the best to all of you watching this video. Hi Shane, what are you doing? Uh, thanks for the call. And hi guys, my name is Luca. If you don't know me, I talk about uh, vintage lenses and some uh, filmmaking tips on my YouTube channel. And uh, I have a pretty minimalist setup for my YouTube videos that I can uh, fit in this small bag. Talking about the camera, I like to use the Lumix S5. This camera is not super expensive, it's a full frame and it has a very good image quality. I like to use this camera with uh, manual focus lenses because uh, I don't really have Lumix S lenses anymore. I prefer to use uh, fixed prime lenses and uh, I don't feel the need to buy a Lumix S lineup of primes. So I stick with the Zeiss classic lineup that is uh, pretty fantastic. And for my YouTube videos, most of the time, I like to use the Zeiss 25 mm f2 that has a very nice field of view and is not super wide where you can see a lot of distortion going on in the face. Like you can see with this weird setup I'm using right now, but uh, having an f2 wide angle lens can really give you a nice look for your YouTube videos. And uh, talking about audio, I like to use the Rode Video Micro, the cheapest option for audio recording mostly because the audio preamp of the Lumix S5 is kind of noisy, so I don't care much about audio quality when I film inside the camera. If I need good audio quality, I record inside the Zoom H1n and a lavalier. And as you can see, this is a pretty minimalist setup, but it's working pretty good. And now let's have a look to the next creator, what he's gonna use. Ciao, guys. Let me stop messing around here. We're talking about gear here. What am I using on my day-to-day -day basis? Number one, my favorite camera to date, we're shooting on it right now, that's the Sony FX3. And today we're using the Sony 20mm f1.8, Canon R5C, 15-35 f2.8. This belongs to B&H, this ain't even mine, but I've had it for like two months. That is the iPhone 13 mini. I am not upgrading this year. This is the first year I'm not upgrading. This is the XLR handle that comes with the Sony FX3, and I love it. I use it all the time. Generic brand, supermarket 
second bottle of water. Highly recommend it. Links in the description below. Gimbal of choice is the Feutex Scorp. I just use this because they sent it to me for free. They send me free gimbal, so I don't really feel like going out and spending $500 on a gimbal. But if I had to, I'd probably pick up the Ronin. Just pick this bad boy up. This is the Insta360 One X3. And this is the One X3, and this is the audio you're hearing from it. Probably sounds pretty crappy, not good for audio, but I enjoy using this camera. It's pretty fun. My tripod of choice that I'm absolutely in love with is this new Ulanzi Carbon Fiber Zero Y Travel Tripod. It's amazing, and it weighs like absolutely nothing. Camera bag is from PGY Tech. I think it's pretty awesome. Drone of choice is actually the DJI, get in there, Air 2S. This thing has not steered me wrong once. I think it's the best value out there. And over here is my sit-stand desk by FlexiSpot. Love this thing. This is my MacBook Pro 14-inch M1 Max, fully maxed out. This is what I edit my videos on. This is a tour box. You guys probably don't know about this, but if you edit video, you probably should know about this. I got a video coming up on this soon. That's my iPad Air. I basically just use that for thumbnails at this point. And this is my gear closet, which I didn't get a chance to do over yet. I just bought this house. A few more gimbals, sliders, some lenses. Oh yeah, Sony ZV-E10. Probably should have said that earlier. And that's really it. Thank you for having me on your channel, Shane. No, don't forget to keep your end of the bargain or else... Hey, it's Peter Gregg, Miami, Florida. Welcome to the Christmas room. That's how I would start off one of my YouTube videos. I want to share with you what cameras I'm using. I'm using one, two, three, four cameras, and they're all running 4K into my Apple Mini Mac or Mac Mini M1. Uh, this camera right here is the Nikon Z6. And I also uh, use a uh, Sony E10, which is that guy right there. How you doing, little fella? So I have different angles by using different cameras. So that's two of the cameras that I use. I also have a Canon um, EOS R6, and that camera is piped into my system. All of them right now are running 4K for my recording. I use that kind of like as if I was making um, or using a RAW file. It's the best file that I can use. And I do have one final camera that I've got up in that corner. It gives me an upper high look. While I continue to look at my regular camera, it gives you an idea that you're getting like a side picture. So I've got the Nikon ZFC and let's click on, okay, this is the Canon R6, which is this fellow right here and uh, a Sony. Now the Sony, you would think, why do you have an E10? It just gives me a very good picture and it does a good job. Now, all of these cameras are actually funneled or running into the Mac mini M1 and it gets recorded on the hard drive in the Mac mini M1. Therefore, I bypass the use of an SD card or a dongle or anything like that. Now, that's the ballistic setup. You can easily set up a much simpler system. Just get yourself a camera, make a wider view like I've got right now. This is a little bit of a wider view. And the reason for that is because I can actually zoom in with the wider view with the same camera and make it look tighter. I could do the same thing with the Canon R6. This is a wider view. And if I was recording it for an S on an SD card, I would take it, put it in the computer, and then with the same camera, I'd create a whole new scene by zooming in. So that's how I'm running here at the Christmas room all the way over in Miami, Florida. Hi to Shane and everyone at Geeky Nerdy Techie. Peter Gregg, Miami. Bye-bye. So hi there. I run a YouTube channel called Mark Bennett's Camera Crisis. I am Mark Bennett. It'd be weird if I wasn't and I named my channel that. Anyway, I'm wasting time. I only have like a minute, I prefer two camera setups. So uh, often I will use a Panasonic GH5 with a Sigma 16mm f1.4 and uh, to accompany it a little Panasonic G7 with its kit lens, which came out in 1945. But I also have a Sony setup, especially when I want to use uh, autofocus, which is a lot lately. The a7 IV over here with the 24 millimeter G Master 1.4, I splurged on that guy. And this is the little uh, ZV-E10 with, again, a 16 millimeter f 1.4 from Sigma. See, I'm all about bang for your buck 
on this channel. All of these cameras give me the maximum amount of goodness for a lower price. My a7 IV is my photo camera and my video camera. It does so much for me. And uh, these cameras, these Panasonic's are such great value as is the little ZV-E10. My lights, what is uh, lighting up my gorgeous face here. I know Shane is trying to get my setup so he can look as handsome as me on camera, but it's not, it's not the setup, but it's pure genetics right here. But I have uh, two soft boxes and two Godox silent lights, the UL-150 and the UL-60. They're super silent, so uh, the only tone that I hear is my beautiful sing-song voice. And uh, right over here in my lights, that is an Aperture MC just stuck by a magnet in an old Godox light. And uh, that is a newer RGB panel. And that is pretty much my regular setup. Oh, I forgot about the microphone. The Rode NTG3, uh, because that has a nice bit of bass in it. it, makes me sound like a big, strong man. And that goes in to my H4N recorder, and I sync that up in post. Pretty simple, pretty basic, great bang for your buck with all the equipment that I use. And I know I probably went over my time, but I really appreciate Shane not cutting me off. Thank you for having me, Shane. My name is Puff, and my channel is called Puff as Z, Puff as Z for all of you from the United States. And my main kit is the main camera I use right now for my YouTube recording and also for, for commercial work. I'm a professional photographer and filmmaker as well. Is the Sony A7 IV. This camera takes all the boxes for me. I'm a hybrid shooter, so photography and video, the right resolution, the right video features for me. This camera is, is just, just right for what I do. My favorite Sony lens at the moment is this 50mm f1.2 uh, G Master lens, the best lens ever made in my personal opinion. For video work, I do use a7 IV for auto focusing, obviously. It does the job very well when I don't have to or don't want to uh, be worried about the auto focusing. It nails it accurately every single time. For every other time when I'm filming B-roll or I need to be fully in control of manual focusing, I always go for my Panasonic S5 camera with manual lenses. I love this camera for many, many reasons. The great color, great picture, all the right settings as well for the high-end video filming in a small camera body. This Panasonic S5 is pretty much permanently in my small rig, uh, rig. And with both cameras, with Sony and with Panasonic, I do use Atomos Ninja 5 recorders. It is my preference, but I do get the same file format from both cameras. Very often I record the same hard drive, so I do get the same files in the same place, in the same, in the same format. Lenses for Panasonic, I, I am a big fan of Seven Artisans. I have used the photo lenses for filming with, but at the moment my favorite are these three, uh, three set of three uh, cinema lenses, the uh, 85, um, 50, and the 35 from Seven Artisans. Very, very good value for money and great for this for this camera. For Sony cameras, I also use this uh, new Samyang 85mm f1.4 Mark II lens. I do really like it. For anything wide, wide angle uh, gimbal work, vlogging, I use this Sigma 16 to 28mm f2.8 contemporary, contemporary lens. And also uh, for anything in between, I do use the lens I'm actually filming with now, the Sigma uh, 35mm f2 because it's so so small and and portable for sound i'm using rode ntg4 plus which i am actually using right now but that requires a boom to to mount from the top when i can't do this or don't want to do it i use a very simple uh, rode uh, wireless go one with the uh, lavalier which i very often hide under the clothes with a special gadget for the lighting, my main key light is a very budget-friendly Colbor CL100 with a, the cheapest I could find, 120 centimeter uh, softbox, which goes which goes on it. This is all great, but you don't need the latest, the most trendy, the most expensive camera or lens. They won't make you better photographer or filmmaker. Use what you have and make it work, even if it is your smartphone or any camera, any lens. They all can do a great job if you put mind to it. So go out there and shoot more photos and videos. Thank you. Hi, I'm Todd Banner. Uh, before I start, I'd like to thank Shane for inviting me to participate in this project. I am a photographer, videographer, and YouTuber in Oak Park, Illinois. We're eight miles, 13 kilometers west of downtown Chicago. I use Lumix Micro Four Thirds equipment to produce my YouTube videos. I use a Lumix G9. 
Um, I came to this primarily from the photography end, which is why I have a more photo-oriented camera like the G9, although it does great video. I use the Lumix 12 to 35 millimeter f 2.8 lens. I'm using that to uh, record right now. B-roll backup camera is a Lumix G95. Also have the kit Lumix 12 to 60 lens that came with that, which I find to be actually a, a, a good lens. I use the Movo WMX1 lavalier mic system, which again, um, I'm cost conscious. Uh, anything else was quite a bit more expensive that I, that I looked at. Um, so it comes with two lavalier mics and a receiver, which is mounted on the camera. That's what I'm using right now. As far as lighting, I have the Aperture Amaran P60C over here as my key light. Um, behind me, I have a couple of Aperture MC mini lights. It's nice because we, you can use the Citus phone app to control all three of these lights, brightness and color. These things are great. Again, not terribly expensive. And as far as uh, post, I just use iMovie, unless there's a good reason not to. Um, I really am into getting things done fairly quickly. Um, I know iMovie very well. I know Final Cut somewhat. If there's a reason to go into Final Cut, I'll do that. Um, I'm very happy with the system. And I think that uh, if you're starting out and you don't want to spend a lot of money, boy, you can find a G9 online, even new, they're not expensive, and you can find plenty of them available used. And if you want a more video centric camera, the, uh, you know, even the, the, the GH5 is still a capable camera. And so you can find those used and not have to break the bank. Anyway, again, thank you, Shane, for uh, inviting me and uh, have a great day, everybody. Hey, everybody, Red Thompson here. So this is some of the stuff I use for YouTube. First off, we've got the S5 with its kit lens here. 20 millimeters is great for YouTube and talking head stuff and even some good old vlogging. So. I definitely recommend this as a full frame option for Panasonic, but of course, I'm a Micro Four Thirds guy. So, used to use the GH5, GH5 Mark II, still do, but nowadays, a lot of times, it's the GH6. You know it's gonna, you know, I, I had to get it right. And along with that, I have some of the better, if not the best lenses for Micro Four Thirds. We got 10 to 25, 25 to 50. Again, that 20 millimeter on Micro Four Thirds giving you wide angle, f1.7 giving you still a blurry background even at 20 millimeters it's hard to beat another thing i like to use is actually this iphone 12 here it's not even the newest one not even close but it does a good job it's great for b-roll vlogging and i do a lot of voice memos on here and just you know incorporate that voiceover into my video Another thing we've got here is the mic we're recording this on. It's the Sarmonic Blink 500. It's a Bluetooth driven mic and transmitter system. And it's not the best for corporate work because the range isn't crazy, it gets interference sometimes, but for just being a couple feet from the camera, it works out really well. The last camera we're gonna talk about, the little G100 here and its kit lens. Um, pretty great little camera and really handy. It's kind of in between the phone here and some of these more professional cameras down here. So definitely like to use that in the right circumstances. That's some of my basic YouTube stuff I use to create some of the videos on my channel. I'm Emily Lowry and I am a complete uh, microphone nerd, which is the name of my YouTube channel. I've been a Micro Four Thirds addict for the last five years or so. And my current primary camera of choice is the Lumix GH6, which is an absolute beaut of a camera. In terms of lenses, it changes every day of the week. I'm a little bit of a lens hoarder. I have way too many, but I do like to keep things experimental. I love uh, vintage lenses like Helios lenses, and I really enjoy the Lumix Leica 25mm f1.4 Prime, which is the nifty 50 in full frame terms. I shoot weddings, corporate stuff, YouTube stuff, passion projects, uh, basically all of the things with this camera. I take it everywhere with me and yes, it's just the best thing ever. I do have a Lumix S5, a full frame camera as my, I wouldn't even call it a B camera, I'd just call it 
different tools for different jobs when i'm doing wedding photography primarily i will shoot full frame and then have the gh6 as a backup for video it will be vice versa the s5 is a lovely camera and incredible value for money compared to a lot of the competitors audio i love the rode wireless goes i have the video maker kit i think it's called and also the little dinky ones are always that handy for weddings you need something a little bit more practical and less reliant on wireless so i just tend to use the sony tx650s quite a lot you can stick them in people's pockets and it's quite incog and neato i had to talk about my setup starting with what i use in the studio and then what i use when i'm out in the field so my main a cam right now is the sony fx3 they've just released the fx30 which is pretty interesting but this is my main full frame camera for this particular front on shot it gives me some nice subject separation from this little backdrop, which is right behind me right here. And it just adds a sense of niceness. The skin tones look pretty good. It's my number one cam. And I use this with the 35 millimeter F1.8 prime lens from Sony. No G Master on this one, just the bog standard lens. For a two camera setup in the studio, if I need it to match the FX3, I have an A7S III. Now this is essentially the same camera, except it's less expensive and we get an awesome viewfinder. So sometimes this finds its way into my camera bag when I'm also outside. Anytime I need a four camera setup, I'm using Micro Four Thirds. One, they're cost effective, and these GH5S cameras from Panasonic look every bit as good as the Sony FX3 at three times the price, except we don't get quite as much background blur and they don't have great autofocus, but I use manual focus 90% of the time anyway. I'm shooting with a GH5S right now, and I'm sure the image quality will be fine, especially in a studio situation. Now my outdoor rig is predominantly micro four thirds because I'm outdoors on a bright sunny day. I don't need the fastest lens in the world and these have spectacular IBIS. So I shoot with a GH6 or a GH5 Mark II in those particular situations, micro four thirds is awesome. I love the handheld results I get out of this and it has some of the best slow motion 4K 120 I've ever seen. There's two other micro four thirds lenses that I really like to use. This, the 25 millimeter F1.7 Prime. The reason why is it's a 50 millimeter equivalent and it's tiny and light, great for travel. And it's one of my go-to travel lenses. I also love using the 10 to 25 millimeter F1.7 zoom lens. It's big, it's heavy, but the optical quality is fantastic. I'm using that right now. When it comes to audio, I use one of two systems. I have a Rode NTG5 shotgun microphone and it goes directly into the XLR adapter of either the Sony FX3, which comes with this great XLR adapter, or I use it on the Panasonic system with their DMW XLR adapter. And that's what you're listening to right now. Anytime I'm outdoors, I'll generally be using the Saramonic Blink 500 Pro. I love the sound of the built-in microphone or you can run an external lav mic. The lighting setup in here couldn't be more simple and also more cost effective on the most part. I bought a pair of soft boxes off eBay for $69 and they've been going strong. I will be replacing my primary light coming up with a Pixel P80 LED. Those things are fantastic. I have two of them in my other studio. This little light here costs about $30 and it does an absolutely great job at just giving me a little bit of fill. Up behind my left shoulder over here is the Colbor CL100 acting as a bald man's hair light. And I'm gonna show you the difference with this on and off. Off, look at that. On, the set comes alive, it's really great. Behind me, I also have an Inostro C1 LED light. These are just small LED bricks that have an internal battery and you can customize it to any color or you can make them flash and so forth. But red is the color of choice because it matches my dodgy curtains. <laughs> Thanks for watching folks, my name's Shane. Do yourself a favor if you're watching this, go subscribe to all the folks in this video. There's some of the best content creators here on YouTube who go a little bit under the radar, much like this little channel here. So if you've enjoyed it, please subscribe to their channel, click all notifications, all that kind of good stuff. And leave a comment down below if you're already aware of some of these great channels. Secondly, if you're an aspiring creator and you don't know where to start, hopefully this video will guide you in the right direction. You don't need the latest and greatest camera to get really great results. So you can get great results with an old 2018 Micro Four Thirds camera, a full frame Sony, an APS-C Fuji camera, whatever the case may be. And hopefully we've helped showcase that in this video. Thanks again for watching. I really appreciate it. Catch you soon. See ya.